Hi everyone, this is Steve from Open Bomb, and in today's video we're going to take a look at uh, kind of creating that first bill of material from SolidWorks and try to answer some of the questions about where the properties come from and why does my bomb look the way it does. So let's get let's get started. A colleague of mine has shared the uh, uh, shared the drone video, uh, the drone model with me, and asked me to do some work on one of the arms. You can see that these arms are probably patterned throughout the design. So uh, I'm taking a look at just one of the arms. <clears throat> so I've got some work to do, and I, and one of the first things I like to do is just to run uh, an a uh, bill of material and see what's in here. So I've opened up SolidWorks. I've uh, I've I've signed in. Uh, just to kind of take you through, I've signed into my Open Bomb account, and uh, I click uh, Create Bomb. Let's see what we get. This is a relatively simple assembly, so I expect to get the parts I see on the screen. Let's take a look at it. So I'm sort of quite surprised that I'm seeing some of the bits and pieces, but not all of them. And so I asked myself, well, why is that? So let's take a look at the at the SolidWorks model and take a look at the three things that, I'm gonna point out sort of three things that really govern what shows up in your in your uh, open bomb. <clears throat> We're gonna see that while this arm is certainly in my, on, on the screen, it happens to be set uh, to lightweight here in, uh, in SOLIDWORKS. Wow, that has a little something to do with it. Uh, and certainly the motor assembly, which is also here, is in my uh, feature list, but I notice that it's been set to exclude from bomb. So let's just take a look real quickly at what that exclude from and include from bomb do. And we can see that from the uh, properties for that part. And there's a, there's a setting there for include and exclude from bomb, from build material. It does exactly what it says. It shows it on the screen, but you won't see the bill material. Sometimes it's a useful thing. The uh, This other part here is the, the arm. It is set to lightweight. So I certainly do want to see that uh, in my in my bill material. So I'm going to go ahead and change the settings on this part to resolved. Yeah, we're just going to go ahead and run that bill material again. And I'm sure that you can all expect that we will see that arm now uh, show up in our build material. Okay, and here it is, and we'll also, uh, you know, notice that it comes in with the, uh, you know, its, its various properties. So that that's and then the final thing that governs what we see in our build material is suppression state. Let's take a, a final look at this little bit right here. This happens to be a spacer. I see that my colleague has it suppressed. So I'm gonna go ahead and unsuppress that. And then we'll run our build material one more time. And we'll, we'll see that, that part will show up in there. So the three things that really govern whether part shows up in my build material are, whether it's state is set to exclude from bomb, whether it's in lightweight mode like the arm was, or of course, whether or not it's suppressed like the spacer was. So the first thing we wanna do when we're creating a bill of materials is look at our SolidWorks feature list and make sure we have those settings set uh, as, as we expect. Okay, now let's take a look at the, uh, let's take a look at our bill of material one more time. And finally, we'll see that the spacer comes in. So this is a good time for me to point out some uh, some behavior that we often get question, questions about. Where does part number and file name and description, how does that all work and, and uh, what's the relationship there? Well, in SolidWorks out of the box behavior, um, part number is always set to file name. So in other words, if you're a designer uh, like I was for many years where I just simply put uh, put part number, let's jump back to SolidWorks here for a moment, where I put part number in file name, like right here for this particular part. When I create a bill material, I'm going to get for file name in open bomb, I'm going to get the name of the file. And then we are going to extract out the root and create uh, that as the part number. 
if that's the kind of the way that you guys model, you can almost stop right here for one other, except for one other uh, thing I want to discuss, uh, discuss is where does description come from? But for most modelers, if they put part number in file name, you're going to get part number in part number. So that's uh, that's a feature of OpenBOM that you, that you should enjoy. But where does description come from? So we have to dive a little bit deeper into SolidWorks to understand where description comes from. And let's take a look at this, at the spacer. So the spacer uh, SolidWorks file is here. The, the uh, there's two areas of the SolidWorks files that you want to start to familiarize yourself with if you're if you're new or maybe if you if you aren't but you haven't spent much time there. They are the configuration list and the properties list, uh, the properties panel, which we're going to spend some more time in the next video on the properties panel. But for now, let's take a look at the configuration list and the behavior of that configuration default is governed right here in that properties panel. Two different properties panels, kind of get used to that. There's properties for the configuration, and then there's properties for the file, which we're going to cover in the next in the next video. So here's where we start to kind of get some interesting behavior. This will discuss what we, what we use for description. I can say tell it to use, hey, get that, get that description and use that in the bill of material. And then there's some other governance down here that says where do we get part number? And in this particular case, I've set part number to get from document name. That is the default. And then in the next video, we'll also discuss how to use configuration specific part numbers, as well as maybe how to specify uh, your own specific part number. But for now, let's, we're going to leave this as document name. This is the out of the box behavior. So you'll recognize that that part number in there is what OpenBOM strips off to create part number. So, for this particular case here, we've set the description to spacer. We've said use this in the uh, bill of materials. I'm going to return back to our top level. We're going to run the, create the bill of material one more time. And what OpenBob is doing now is kind of diving down into that spacer apart and grabbing out the thing that you've said to use for description. Okay, so we'll summarize this here in a second. So finally, we have the spacer. We have its part number um, in the file name. We've got part number pulled out. And then we also got, quote unquote, spacer, the setting that we put in for uh, in the configuration. So. So finally, you know, to, to summarize the three big areas that govern what belongs, what shows up in your bill material are the suppression states, the lightweight state, and whether or not you've used exclude from BOM over here. The, the things that govern the properties in your bill material are primarily set in the configuration uh, panel properties for a particular part. You can spend a little more time fooling around with this, but you'll start to see how that governs what shows up in your bill of material. And then finally, I would like to leave you with this one, uh, with this one uh, thought that we will start to fool with in our next video. Excuse me, let me close this. And that is the Open Bomb template. And in our next video, we're going to talk about the template and we'll talk about uh, how to get more specific properties from your other uh, from your other files in there. So for now, that's it. Be sure to check into the next one uh, for the next video and, uh, and the online help more details. Thanks.